It's a random news. This is an episode 80, 88. Ooh, 88, like Kill Bill 88. You guys get the reference? No? Yes, no? Was it the Crazy 88 or was it the Crazy 80? Crazy 88. It's Crazy 88, okay. Crazy 88. Yeah, yeah. That was a good movie, by the way. I wish they would have did a part three. I'm glad Joe got that out of him. Like, yeah, I'm thinking about it. There was a... There was what? a... There, Not the there was a mock, age, huh? there, there was a mock-up of, like, a poster showing Zendaya playing the kid of... Uh, of oh, um, Vivian. Of Vivica A. Fox. I said Vivian. <laughs> Close enough. They showed, uh, like, like, a mock-up before her photo, you know, with uh, Uma Thurman's corn on the bottom. Like, if you're still feeling salty about this or something, you know, come find me in a few years or some shit like that. Yeah, that would be a, that would be a pretty good choice. Zendaya is fucking killing it right now. Yeah, she's in Dune. She's in Spider Man. She's a fashion icon. And this is a guy. Like, this... She's in what? She's in your pants. <laughs> and this is uh, this is this this is coming from a guy that just saw that just finished uh, Euphoria like a couple of weeks ago. She's in that. The show Euphoria. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I keep think. Wait, is that like you know what? I, sorry. I'm thinking of Entourage, the ease. Like, you say euphoria, and I'm thinking of Entourage. I know it's entirely different. One is very old. Way fucking different. I know, I know. It's just the word, the the title itself. I'm thinking Entourage, and then yeah, one's about like you know teenage and high school. Oh, the other shit's about like the fake male fantasy. Wait, still still great though. Entourage. Besides that, no, no, no. The uh, euphoria. Oh, that's, that's really the basis of it? Just the fake male fantasy? What, Entourage? That's what Entourage is about. No, the other one. Euphoria. No, I said, t- I said teenage angst, basically. That's, I ah, said that first. Ah, yeah, Euphoria is pretty much about, like, you know, I think of 13 reasons why, except without the whole crying. fact that it's centered around suicide. No, there's definitely crying in this show, too. But I feel like this one's more, ah, there's much more realism in this one. Compared to 13 Reasons Why, because one of the critics, one of the um, criticisms I always heard about that show was the fact that how it, like, it glorified suicide. And I didn't understand what that meant at first. But then after I really thought about it and seen other people talk about it, I realized it kind of does. Because, unfortunately, when, you know, people commit suicide, they're not thinking per se, you know, they're thinking like of the moment. The way 13 Reasons Why I handled it, it's just like, oh, I'm going to commit suicide, but I'm going to make you think about me nonstop afterwards with these tapes and shit and make you really see what you did to me. Like, in a sense, it did glorify it because it makes people think like, oh, you know, I could just, you know, it could, uh, this is awesome. I can make people feel the way I want them to feel after death or some shit. With TikTok videos. Oh, with TikTok videos too, yeah. You know, release them all in a certain time. Even YouTube videos might work out. But whatever they decide to do. Nah, it's so, to that down. Yeah, so I felt like, yeah. So that was like a valid criticism with that show. Very like teen fantasy, glorifying suicide. But Euphoria is completely different because this is, it's almost like a mature version of it because it deals with addiction. It deals with, um not being your real self or some shit, like, you know, hiding behind the facade, dealing with, uh, I believe, transgender issues as well, because one of the main characters was, um, uh, what do they call that? One of the main characters was... Uh, transition. Transition, there you go. So, I don't know, it just all felt, it all felt real. And Zendaya's performance was fucking amazing, man. Especially, like, the scenes where she wants you to feel for her, like when she's, you know, because in the show, she's uh, she's an addict. She's addicted to uh, drugs, but not like, you know, uh, not like the super strong stuff, but more psychedelic prescription type drugs. And, you know, there's weed also, but mainly that type of stuff, like pill popper type shit, you know? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I don't yeah. No, nah, but it's, it's, it's good, man. It's Sounds like good. really good. Yeah. Would it's that just like an, it's a, what put her onto the mainstream? No, 
I don't definitely think. not. She's been in the mainstream before, but if anything, this shows like a much different side of Zendaya that you've never seen, pretty much. Because, you know, you've seen her as Mary Jane in the new Spider-Man trilogy, and she's like cracking jokes and, you know, at Peter, but she's also like this very, um, what do they call those type of people? Introvert? Extrovert? Introvert. introvert. Yeah, oh, she's like oh, a very she's introvert. She's John. In the she's John. Got it. <laughs> okay yeah sure <laughs> she's yeah it's like she's very into herself but you know like she always had a crush on peter but just never told him i guess or always liked him or some shit so you see as like the wise crackings and dahlia but this is like a whole new side of her that's like i think if i'm not mistaken it won her uh an oscar for like an outstanding uh lead actress in a in a, in a show uh and euphoria? she in euphoria yeah either an oscar or whatever the tv one is called i can't remember but uh, she's just fantastic. Oh, and Emmy, show, she won an Emmy. Emmy, yeah, there you go. I should have known that. Yeah, that's that's TV TVs. Emmy, yeah, yeah, yeah. TVs are Emmys. So she won for outstanding lead actress, and you can see it, man. Like yeah, she really puts her, place. she really puts her all into that show. It's it's I I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching. IGN had it's awards very, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I take those awards as serious as people take MTV awards. <laughs> I don't hey, think hey, no idea. When I was young, that was much it. So leave me alone. I mean, look, MTV Awards, I think I even said it in the chat. They freaking put <laughs> they put Andre, they put Andre 3000's performance as like one of the best for four brothers on an MTV award. It's just like come oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you're not serious here. Come on, let, let, let's be real. Not to so like I, I I personally don't take them seriously. Not to go into her catalog, but she doesn't really have that many movies or TV Mm-mm. shows, and she's really out there. That's the crazy part. Yeah. Her movies are one, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the other ones are just like animated movies. Spider-Man is mostly all of them. <laughs> but she does like a voice, right? Yeah, she has a voice for two movies. One is super, but that's a, like a Disney, you know? She. Mm. But um, I think what really put on the map, my opinion, was like, like the greatest showman, because that movie was popping, and people loved the performance on it. That she can sing and dance, especially with her TV show that she did on Disney with the what's it called, Bella Thorne. So, mm. and then that Malcolm and Marie was like, "Oh, she can act, act." Like, oh, that was she yeah, can that was act, another movie. act. Yeah, you know, more mature, especially with you know, uh, uh, I don't want to say Denzel's son, J- John David uh, Washington. Cause mm-hmm. I, uh, that's rude to say. Killed it. That movie, they killed it. Man, she was I heard making. It was good. She, yo, she in the beginning, she was making like mac and like, you thinking she's making some crazy shit, right? And you're watching it, and she's making mac and cheese. Not even like, like from scratch. It's just a craft with the, <laughs> with the powder and shit. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, she made it look good though. I was like, damn, that shit look delicious. <laughs> yeah, I got, I gotta watch that one when I get a chance. But uh, moving on, uh, like movie wise, more, more. Ah. Marvel did the smart thing. You know, I know we hate it, but they dropped the Mobius trailer instead of the Spider Man trailer. So oh, don't, don't, don't Mor- say Marvel. Sony. The Morbius trailer. Mobius. Morbius. 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 Not Mobius from Loki. Mobius is from Loki, yeah. All right. Sony in conjunction with Marvel, which is association. Chancho, be... it's the same word. It says in the title, in association. Okay, I want you. I'm just being politically correct here. Wow. Okay. okay. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny's here. That's right. <laughs> okay. In association, they dropped it. That's Spider Man. But that trailer looks really good. That's an official, right? Not teaser or theatrical. That's like the. Uh, it's the first official trailer, yeah. It looks good. CGI. Mm-hmm. Jared looks pretty good. Uh, there's a couple, because I know he's an anti-hero in the comic books, but I wonder, like, who's the villain in this? And, like, when I was watching the trailer, you know how you could get a, a sense of a vibe of, oh, this is the bad guy, whatever. But it seems like he's a hero and the bad guy's himself or people's perception of him, but they also, like, okay with him. I don't know. Did you get that? Or am I off? Like, it was all over the place for me. If we got what? The fact that we don't know who the villain is? Yeah, like the like the like you know the big bad. Usually when we watch these Marvel trailers, excuse me, Sony trailers, 
Like, by, the the look, thing. by the looks of the trailer, this is only obviously this is the first official one. You know, Tyrese and uh, what looks that guy, that guy that looked like walking the subway. I don't know who he was. He reminds me of like a Doctor Who looking type person. Can't remember his name for the life of me, but them looking for Jared Leto. I'm guessing they're going to be the bad guys. And then so Jared Tyrese Leto. Tyrese don't look a bad guy. He looks like a good guy. No, he has a robotic arm and it's Tyrese. He's I immortal, mean, bro. Fast 9. Come on. He's I the mean, original vampire. <laughs> it may not even be a villain. It might be just like himself fighting the hunger and the urge. Yeah, yeah, I have a feeling if they do that, that's definitely going to be like uh, something they haven't done before, I feel. Because, you know, in these movies, there's like it's like you said, there's always a villain. But if there isn't, and it's just him trying to figure out like what he can do, curb the hunger, um, who knows, maybe he might be fine trying to find the origin of this whole vampire shit and then finding the origins guy that turns out to be a villain. But then I feel like we've seen that type of trope so many times. I feel like if this is just a self-contained story where he's just like worrying about himself, escaping this government that's trying to trap him or whatever, and then in return, in rea- I mean, in reality, the government is really the bad guy. Then you know, it could. I feel like it could be his own good thing. But uh, I hear I uh, saw some few comments that where they fucked it up is the fact that, spite you know, suppose it's in the Spider-Man universe, it's in the Venom universe. Because you know you got um. Oh, when he mentioned Venom, he's like, I yeah, am Venom. He's like, no, it's, just... it's not even. It's not even that part. There was a part where one of the officers was like, oh, you know, this is about as crazy as that thing that happened in San Francisco. <sighs> and obviously, they're talking about the whole Venom and Carnage thing. I feel like it's about that and not only Venom. So it could take place during Venom versus you know Venom Let There Be Carnage or afterwards. But um, it's just like. I just hope Sony doesn't pull an Amazing Spider-Man 2 and just throw so much in this movie. Well, based on you seeing Venom, Venom 2, how does how does this whole situation make you feel? Like, does do you feel like, I guess, like, Morbi- Morbius would end up being a better movie than Venom, or you just kind of, like, false, not really a false, but just you curve your expectations? I'm definitely going to curb my expectations, John, because my thing with the first Venom, I just felt like there wasn't enough action. And the whole thing with, I don't know, I, I, as much as I love Tom Hardy, there was just certain ways that he was acting. It, it's, it's, I just, I would, I, it didn't, it didn't work for me. It didn't work for me personally. And it was the same thing with Venom Let There Be Carnage, where when I saw it, it really is a fucking romantic comedy between two people. And it's Eddie and Venom, you know, clashing or whatever. But then, you know, you get the Venom of Carnage, which I thought was cool. But I feel like if he's only going to be in this one movie and then that's it, you're done with him. I feel like could have done a lot more with Carnage. But to go back to the point, I feel like if this if this is its own contained I mean, not like, its own contained story and it's more entertaining than the first Venom for me, then I will consider it a win, but I'm still going to go in with super low expectations. Because I've already learned my lesson from Justice League and Fast Nine. You don't go into movies with high expectations. Again, because the, sec- DC, the sec- second you do is DC and uh whatever Warner Brothers that did Fast Nine. You don't go you don't go with those type of expectations into a movie, especially on its ninth go around. Oh. <laughs> oh what? Oh what? I was just saying, what are you expecting from Fast Nine, bro? I like what I said when I finally seen it. I enjoyed it because, you know, you just sit down and watch it. You know it's illogical. They even poke fun at it in the movie, and that's it, you know? What are you expecting? So, you know, with Marvel has a good track history with, you know, movies. It's and not a Marvel movie. It's not Marvel. It's Sony. Okay, but they... This is Sony. Okay, this is but Sony they added... A little bit oh, of Marvel. This is okay. not Marvel, Sony. Okay, Spider-Man is Sony, and it came out good. Great. You mean that's, that's helmed by Marvel. There's a difference. Okay, 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 okay. This is Sony building a universe for Spider-Man. But they yeah. created, but they already incorporated the MCU with this movie because we then knew that uh, Vulture was in this movie. Mm-hmm. It's not like, this, like like they added this at the end like the different Venom. 
Because for Venom, you mentioned in Carnage, Carnage could, could still come back because Eddie could be in a whole other universe. Did you see the movie? I don't care. <laughs> As, well, because of Car- the way Carnage functions, he can always come back. Well, that too. Can yeah. He? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the way he was created, I guess, in a sense, right? But even still, he's in another yeah. universe. Maybe things might change up. Maybe the ending might be a bit different. So you got to get Eddie someone else sa- to suck Eddie's blood or some shit? Is that what Morbius is going to do and then Carnage is going to come up again? <laughs> no. I mean, listen. With this whole Spider-Man movie coming up, everything else in the past, in my opinion, with Doctor Strange also, is going to be a different, like a, a different universe. It's going to merge and gonna create a whole new reality, which can bring back characters or just in bring them, well, bring them back the same ones or bring them back the same actor, but in a different light of the same character. You know, a different alternate universe. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, like, Injustice, you know, they have different universes, not to mention them, just the idea of alternate realities. That's just my my thing, because with this whole Spider-Man, like, you know, multi- multiverse and, and Loki, it really opens the door for Marvel to either press restart uh, or, or, or a soft reboot on a lot of things. It's a great way to in, uh, incorporate Fantastic Four, the X-Men. And like I said, I didn't see the Carnage movie, but they could bring him back too. They could bring him back a lot of people if they want to. Theory time. Theory time. Um, so I was watching a video right before this started by Comics Explained. Explained? Yes. With uh, Osborne. Did you see that? Mm, no. So there was the website Oscorp something dot com something like that for the original Spider Man Amazing Spider Man trilogy. There was a website that was up, and supposedly that website has come back around. Wait, but the second iter- iter- alliteration with Andrew or with Toby? Amazing, Amazing Spider Man. Oh, because it's not a trilogy. If you know your Spider Man, you should know. Come on, I know, Spider-Man. but you said trilogy, and it's, it's not a trilogy. trilogy. I ain't used the word trilogy. I don't know you, you did, John. You did. I don't say know what you're talking about. Shut up. <laughs> 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 but um yeah so there was uh the the website i forgot the exact website but it's something related to oscorp so that website ended up coming back around recently and according to people it says on the website that they are they are now partnered with um with uh stark industries so they were um he was saying that that could kind of implement a lot or implicate a lot of things after the movie of Oscorp actually being a thing going forward if it's a real if the website is still real that is because mm. it's been years so somebody could have just took it over and put something up was so, it Oscorp Industries I think that's the site oh I see it you're right Oscorp teams with Stark Industries yep 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 this is real well not real but the website so, is up the website said, is up yeah, he I, said like, it could I, be I like fake. that they're doing that. Yeah, he said it could it could be fake. Years ago, that website was actually used for um, the promotion of well, parts of Amazing Spider-Man. If if the third movie was taking place, it was being used for that. But um, he was saying that if it's it's OscorpIndustries dot com something like that. Oscorp dash Industries dot com. Originally, it was just Oscorp Industries one no dash. And now it's Oscorp Dash Industries. So he was saying that it could be a fake website. Maybe it's not. Maybe they just they did the dash to differentiate. Don't know at this point in time, but you know, we'll have to see. I mean, they got they've got applications if you want to work for them. Work? You know they legit saying. they got this whole website is legit. They got an employee portal, they got future projects, a whole bunch of classify shit. See, I I like when movie studios do that. I feel like that's something that's oh, one of the things that's been missing. Even though I know that counts as like advertisement, but doing like the websites where you just click on and see shit. I mean, the most recent that I remember doing that was when The Dark Knight was coming out, and they had like the Matrix. They did that too. Yeah, Wait, they the had new, two. for the new Matrix. Yeah, that's they had out? two different trailers. Well, that you can thank yeah, you can thank Warner Brothers for that. I wouldn't say two different trailers. Uh, well, okay, it, it was more the it was same more trailer, two, but, but it's two different clips. Different, no, it's like a whole lot of different. 
Star okay, Wars. Okay, 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 okay. So there are two <laughs> different trailers in a way. <laughs> One was either the red pill or the blue pill. And you got different mm. like view, like angles yeah, yeah. of shit or more every, clips and less clips, you know. Every specifically the time, whatever time you would get in the video, we're starting to see the actual time. That too. Of, you know, if this is what time it is, and this is what's going on, and then it shows a whole bunch of random clips from from the the actual trailer. Yeah, like the like I miss I miss that type of uh advertisement, man. It's like back in the days, also when they when they did uh the Blair Witch Project, and you thought that was like a real movie, because they had a website that showed the events, that showed the people that supposedly were dead in the movie that people thought was real. The payment power, Normal Activity did that. Well, the first one, probably the ones after that too. But I miss that type of more like marketing. You can say this. I miss that type of marketing in movies where they want to. They want you to feel like this universe is real type shit. I like, I like that. I like when they do that. It's random, but I kind of miss movie tie-in games. Even though which movies are you? Ah, even yeah. though half of them suck. Like a lot oh, of movies had tie-in, tie-in games. Yeah. I think the last good one that I remember playing is probably the one that came out with Batman Begins. Oh, really? Decent. Yeah, I think that was decent. I remember playing that for my. I think game Spider-Man too. Two came out after ba- Batman Begins, right? Yeah. Tobey oh, Maguire's Spider-Man 2? Yeah, 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 yeah. Before? I came I think before, it bro. Before. Wait, what? yeah, you have, yeah, because I think Spider-Man came out, what, 08? Yeah, because no, that, yeah, that, yeah, that, that game, 05, 05, 05, 05, 05, 05, 05, 05. Yeah, because that game, because I know that game was monumental for, like, you know, the free swing in, in around the city. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, well, because you know, you know, you know what the rule is, John. When it comes to movie tying games, they suck. Games turned into movies, they suck. So I don't know why they can't strike like, a perfect balance there. How hard is I, it? I know everybody considered it to suck, but if you remember Superman Returns, I thought that was probably the best Superman game ever made. Just just that, flying alone. Oh, I remember playing the demo for the 360. That, that's the only thing yeah. I ever played. I never bought the actual game. I played that demo forever. I was like, yeah, I'm just be, having the time of my life yeah, flying. The that flying around, around and when looking at you. You start breaking the speed. <laughs> oh, that's the end when you break the sound barrier. Yeah, I remember that shit. Even though the tasks were stupid, like, you know, because you had, like, the heat ray, you had the ice breath and shit. Yep. It was so dumb. But, yeah, the flying around aspect was pretty cool, I remember. Yep. Yeah, I remember opinion, that shit. I think that was the best Superman game. It's one of the only Superman games out there. <laughs> There's one for the 64. Prior to that, I was going to say you had the 64 one, which was critically claimed garbage. (laughs) There's a guy on YouTube who's actually making his own Superman uh, game, and it looks really good. Oh, where uh, he has like a black shirt and shit. He kind of looks like um, Superman from the Titan show, right? Yeah. Well, I know it's like different ones, like different stuff, but... um... It's somebody, just one guy creating it in his own world. Everything's breakable. He can fly, mm-hmm. do all these things. Yeah, it's no. I, I, yeah, I saw that video. I think I saw it on I IGN think, yeah, or something. I think that was like a year or two years ago because I know Angry Joe was talking about it because that's like his favorite character of all time. Uh, Spider-Man? No, Superman. Superman. Yo, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> Still reading the Spider-Man shit? No, I was looking. I was, well, I was reading it too because they, they mentioned like Tony Stark... Um, he, he's like he's alive in his universe that they're mentioning, and he's mm-hmm. the one who personally signed the deal that, he, and he is also Iron Man, <laughs> like publicly known. Yeah. So I wonder if like, you know, is that is that leaving the door like, with in the Amazing Spider-Man universe, is Tony still alive, and you know the whole shit again, like the whole he becomes Iron Man, and you know he's I don't know, it's interesting to see what's going on. It's like you uh, bring him you, back what, without bringing him back. What uh, What do you think of the trailer, John, for Morbius? Um, I thought it was good. Uh, I'm hyped for it. I, uh, I, I, I view it. I view it better than I I did Venom. I I feel like the first trailer of Venom for me was fire, but then as the movie was getting closer and they released some more stuff, it started to wane off for me. Right now, I'm above that. I kind of feel like this, um, this movie. At least Morbius is your typical MCU hype level movie. You know, it's mm. kind of, yeah, I'm going to definitely go watch this and I feel I'm going to enjoy this. And I like the Eternals. Wait, you're not, you're not like, like hype for that? 
What, Eternals? Yeah. Well, they, it's been bombing, according to... Ah, uh, fuck them dudes, <laughs> man. That movie looks good. I don't, I, yeah, I, I don't personally, I, I, don't go, I don't go by that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch it. But... Listen, when it comes to a movie like Eternals... They said Dark World sucked. I like that movie. I think you might have heard something in my mic. I didn't say what Thor. <laughs> yeah, did you say something, John? Oh like... uh, no, I thought I thought you were, no, because I thought you were in the middle of saying something because something something weird happened a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah. why I was like, why can't I he think, just stop? I think that was my mic. All right, I'm not sure. But... Oh, <laughs> oh, all right. Well, like I said, because uh, all right. So from when you said that uh, it's being bombed, I've less, the last thing I'm ever gonna go by in the movie is Ryan Tomatoes. That's 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 my last that's my last that's my last source of like do I trust him to tell me to see if this movie is good? I agree with you, but at the same time you have to understand that no MCU movie has really ever gotten a Ryan score. That's very true. Just but following the how MCU many formula? How many MCU movies do you know have gay diverse characters in it that apparently a lot of people have a problem with? So here wait, that's the, that's what's gonna happen in the Eternals. There's gay in diverse inter- character in, in, in Eternal. All right, in the Eternals, and uh, uh, in the Eternals, the <laughs> character of I don't I don't know that I don't know none of these people's names. I'm just letting yeah. you know right now. All I know is what they look like in the trailer. I just got Gilgamesh for you. That's it. Which one's Gilgamesh? <laughs> I believe that's the one who's Rob Stark. Okay, it is. Actually, oh, no, that's Icarus. I don't know who Gilgamesh is. Okay, Icarus is like the Marvel's, I mean, this version Superman, basically, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so pretty much, the, I, the, this is what I heard, too. The the black guy in the trailer that looks like he's, like, more human than Eternal. The tech that dude, looks, cause I think he's a tech guy for them. Okay, yeah. That's All what right, I was so reading in the on. movie, in the movie, he's gay. He's married okay. to a man, and they have a son. Now, I heard, I think it was... um. I forgot there was a podcast that I watched that I was listening to where they said that when that happened, when they showed that on screen, that there was a few people that got up and just walked out of walked out of the theater. Hmm. Over some over some shit like that. And you know he, he's not even like the main was, character. But still the fact that it's gay with the son, Johnny, people people have walked out of movies for less. And you know, nowadays with people being Sexes, races, and shit. This uh, they're coming more. They're coming out a lot more. You could tell by the fact that this movie's being it's being praised in a lot of other areas, but the people that are review bombing it, they're not talking about that. They just think that this is Disney's uh, or MC uh, Marvel's agenda to be like you know, just because we're gonna have like gay characters in a film, man. I guess I think one character might be trans. I'm not too sure. You have a deaf character in the film. You have an Indian superhero. You have all these different people in there. You know, so many women and men. But a lot of people have a problem with it because they feel like it's being shoved in their face. So, so I feel like that's the reason for the review bombing. And if it wasn't for that, this would not be rated worse than Thor Dark World. I could tell you that. I could tell uh, you that I'm, much right I, now. I will it's go not going to be worse than that. <laughs> Another perspective that that I heard, because that's news to me, that whole uh-huh. everything you just explained. Um, yeah. I was watching a couple other reviews, and they had, like, the same consensus thing, and they just felt... One guy is a, somebody who's affiliated, affiliated with comics. I, I, I forgot. It was a random channel that I'm not familiar with. And then the other was just um, another kind of popular YouTube channel. I don't follow it, though. That's the problem. But mm-hmm. they were saying that they felt like the movie itself was, like... In terms of the grand scope of things, it was good. But the problem is, like, this was what, like, originally Guardians of the Galaxy was in a, a wild pitch that you didn't know was going to be successful. This is just going the other way. Because the guy who reviewed or who he knows the comics, he said that he felt as it's, the, it's kind of the same issue in comics with the Eternals in that nobody really cares about them because their role doesn't really feel like that important in the mm-hmm. grand scope of things. So you're saying, like, in terms of the movie, like, the characters and actors are good. It's just like once you get through the movie and watching it, it just doesn't feel like you know they're of really of any importance. Like mm-hmm. they don't really set, have set, have anything going on with them. So that's that's the kind of like negative negativity I've seen with the movie. Like everything you said is new to me. But that that's a val- that's a valid but that's a very valid criticism though of the movie. Saying mm-hmm. saying that you know 
like you said, in the grand scheme of things, it's almost like saying like this movie is like very unnecessary. Because the question everyone's gonna have in there in their mind is just like, where were you guys during the Black Plague? Where were you during Auschwitz? Where were you during but they mentioned slavery? All of that though. Where were you? I know they mentioned it, but still, people are still gonna be like, oh, why did you know? Where were you during all these big monumental events? But it's like they said in the trailer, it's like you know, they prevented to do it because of the deviants or something like that, or they're not supposed to interfere. No, it's, it's, it's not the deviants. It's it's um. It's higher than that. I'll, I'll get the name right now. The c- 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 starts with a C. The Celestials. The, the Celestials. Celestials. Yes. You Thank you. So that's the whole point of not intervening. Also, the fact that it's for human to evolve the way they're supposed to evolve. Because then, if these gods come through and didn't, and, you know, and do it, I guess in a sense, humans are just going to be lazy because it's like, oh, we got these guys to protect us. We're not going to learn ourselves. So in that sense, it does make sense. But the whole thing of um. What you were saying, John, about uh, that guy saying that, how, you know, grand scheme of things, this movie is, you know, it's almost in a sense, it's just like, what's the whole point of it? I think maybe they're probably just doing it because it wasn't like contract wise, but I still want to see it just for that fact. I don't care if it doesn't have any repercussions later on in the future. I don't expect to see these guys maybe in the next Avengers movie. Yeah, like uh, I, I kind of like when he said that it was like kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy, mm. just uh, unsuccessful. I was like, you know what? I get it because mm-hmm. me walking into Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm not gonna pretend I knew anything about them walking into the movie. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and they're being, you know, just enjoying it and it being, and they're being a good, a good ride. And you know, if this, if Eternals turns out to be that, but you know, just the other spectrum, I mean, it's cool with me. I mean. I'm not gonna be upset about it. It looks it looks interesting. I'm interested to know why they didn't help out with Thanos. That's yeah, about it. Like yeah. for the for small story stuff, I want to see it for that. And then also, you know, cinematography looks, looks fantastic, and the special effects look great. Mm-hmm. And I hear really good things about the action in the movie. So you have all that in the movie where I don't really give a fuck about a story. You got you got my ticket. So like, I, that's what I want to see. I want to pose this question for everybody after we all see the movie. Hopefully, all of us see the movie. I I'm just seeing wanna, yeah, I'm gonna see it Friday morning. So I just want to, if you feel it would have ended up being better if they released it as a Disney Plus show versus it being a movie. Just keep that in the back of your mind. But with while all I'm, the star power there, that's a lot I of mean, star power, though. It's Disney. I mean, yeah, but we we saw the debacle with Black Widow money wise. Unless they're gonna pay them that money. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not saying like I'm. I'm talking not not a Disney Plus release. I'm talking you about just, actually making this a Disney Plus show. You're saying forget about all the extra technicalities of people doing it, and not doing it, but as a story driven element, whatever. Can would it, it be better if it was a of not a division? Okay, start like that. You know, Wandavision, um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki, if it, if it ended up et cetera, it, uh, yeah, just fill a, another TV show and just let Spider-Man actually be the next movie going forward. Because I really believe at this point it's just a placeholder until we get to Spider-Man. Mm. Like, I imagine their end credit scene or the mid or the post credit scene is probably going to be, like, their big stinger. Like, how it can come in the future. And, you know, at the end of the movie, it's going to do what Marvel does. Like, oh, the Eternals, <laughs> Eternals will return. return. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't think they well, like... Also, also, Giovanni, sorry, real quick. You can't really say much with the star power in this in this movie. The only one, no offense to all the ones that are in the movie, obviously. We, I mean, I know them as actors because, you know, I've seen a lot of shit. But mainstream-wise, your biggest actor there is Angelina Jolie, honestly. I mean, granted, yes, you have two She's characters dated, that were but yes. two still, but it's Angelina Jolie, bro. I know. Everybody knows. Angelina so what does Jolie. that mean? Just her name now. <laughs> it, I was gonna say you have the, yeah, you have two of game, fame, of, fame of game of Thrones. Which sucks to say. Which sucks to say because you know those guys are good actors. But, but Rob Stark actually the, has when you see them, the bodyguard. You think, oh, the I Game of Thrones. An amazing movie. No, it's a it's TV show. Opinion. It's a, it's a yeah, it's a UK, it's a UK it's a UK show on Netflix. It was popular See, on I Netflix. Saw it. I saw it. I, it's a, I've, seen a, a co- I've seen a couple. I've seen a I've seen a couple of clips. That's when he's protecting like the president ends up kind of falling in love with her. Well, right. that's the Kevin. Yeah, that's a Kevin Costner movie with Whitney Houston. But the show, he's like protecting the the lady, like you know the queen or some shit like mm-hmm. that. 
I don't I, I don't watch it, but like I said, I've seen like an action clip from from the show, but that's about it. Okay, but so they have fame. Even though, yeah, kid, okay, yes, they have the fame, but you don't really know them from Game of Thrones, Shivani. Like, come on. But then you have Kumail, who's a popular comedian from Silicon Valley, but he's not widely known like that. I'd say probably the big slick was who's that his who? most. Kumail, he's uh, you know the Indian, the Indian like, dude, crazy buff. Yeah. Oh yeah, out of nowhere, but him, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he has, you know, he has the big slick. But he thing, was in other was, movies like, though. The his biggest one was the big slick, which is that Amazon movie that I that was praised, and then he has the show Silicon Valley that he was on. But I, he's, I wouldn't say he's mainstream. Nah, he to was the with point. Batista. That shit was hilarious. Oh, and Stuber. Okay, how I'm many sorry. People, okay. How many people saw Stuber? Me. <laughs> <laughs> from here probably yeah you and me probably saw stupid but I'm just saying like the only real big thing there is Angelina Jolie and I'd say probably Selma Hayek too I was just I don't know. about her yeah I don't know what her role in this movie how big it's gonna be but those two are your real main star powers everybody else you could definitely throw them on the show no nah, no nah. Gemma Chan nah, nah she's up there too don't, don't Gemma Chan the the love interest of Rob Stark. No, oh, I don't. I have she was in Crazy trailer. Rich Asians. She also did a, a Disney movie, which is Raya. Well, that's voice acting. I'm like Raya and the Seven Dragons or something like that. Last Dragon, Last Dragon, Last Dragon. She was in Captain Marvel. Wait, why was she in Cap? Wait, hold on. If she's in, if she's in Captain Marvel. No, something's There's wrong a lot of actors that double up in, in in MCU stuff. Yeah, yeah, she but that probably, doesn't make she sense. Was, she probably was one of those it's, people that was part of Captain Marvel's original crew that turned on her. I feel like she might have been the green alien. Yeah, yeah but then again, like, oh yeah, I guess it's cosmetics. No one's gonna really know the difference. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it, it's it's not a big deal, you know. Like, there's actors who I know who in past MCU stuff come forward and be a big deal. In another way of form, it's not really. Well, for me, at least in the eastern side of the world, she's a big deal. That's okay, insane. for you, but we're talking about the masses, bro. That's why oh. when you say it can't work as a TV show, I think it could. But like I said, when you said it's star power, you really just have those two there that are more widely known, and then the other two that you could just throw them in another show. I'm not saying that you should do that. They should be able to spread their wings in a movie like this, but. It potentially, you know, after we see the movie, like, you know, we can answer John's question about if it works as a TV show. I just, you know, when you said automatically, like, nah, you can't do that with that star power. That's why in my head I was thinking, it's like, mm, you know Angelina Jolie and Selma Hayek and the, and the Stark brothers. I mean, look, people refer to them as the Stark brothers. Damn, you know? that's what wild. Else do they say? That's wild. What else do they say? <laughs> what else do they say? But um, like I said, I'm excited for it. I already got my ticket Friday morning, so I'm I'm hoping to enjoy it. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it. I, I'm a more fan. Of like I I like exposition. I love movies like that to explain, talk, and just see where were you, you know, fill that realm, you know, mm-hmm. answer the questions I have in my brain. Like you know, oh, you guys created the pyramids and shit like that. Like you know, even if it's you know within his own Marvel universe, it's cool to see. What were you yeah. guys doing since you landed? Till now, like they had a whole clip of the, the Indian dude, like he's he's a Bollywood actor, you know, a huge Bollywood actor, and I'm like, I don't know, I, I like that interaction, but I'm I'm a simple man when it comes to certain certain movies and certain actors, I mm-hmm. give them the benefit of the doubt, but I'm gonna watch this. I mean, I'm not sure in the theaters, I don't have a babysitter, but <laughs> <laughs> if I did, I would be in this day one, guaranteed. Now, if it's on the internet, I might get it. I watch it. It's gonna be on Disney Plus. <laughs> it is? Uh not right away, but eventually. Eventually, yeah. Most well, whenever, likely, if anything, probably by the end of the year. I'm waiting for Shang Chi Shang Chi to be on it, so it gives me a measurement of like how long a movie from theaters is gonna be on Disney Plus. I think at the end month. of at the end of at the end of November, I think. Oh they, they announced, I know they it's, announced it's legal. Thing. It's legal. Cause they, yeah, because they already announced the <laughs> pre order for like the for the physical copy. So I think around that time, it should be uh, out on Disney Plus. I feel like I, I even sent it to you in the, in the chat. I forgot. You did. I forgot. I saw a meme that was like, man, I'm getting flash. I'm getting PTSD 
Jon Snow didn't know anything in Game, Game of Thrones, and he doesn't know anything in this show, <laughs> in this movie. Because <laughs> yeah, he's just like, where have you guys been? And supposedly, he's not even going to turn into his Black Knight character in this movie. Ah, come on. That's so that Because already, remember... That was remember, already said. Yeah, because yeah, I, I just found this out. Because remember, they showed the photos of the character he's supposed to be, like, with the yeah, fucking... In the past. Like, with the helmet, looking badass and shit. Supposedly, it doesn't happen in this movie. Uh, November twelfth. Ooh, Change we're at the Veterans Day. Change oh, it's lit. It's November twelfth. Oh, that's November next 12th. week. Yeah. Oh, but you saw it already, right? Me? That move? No, Kenny. No, I didn't get a chance to see Shang Chi. Ah, okay, okay. Yo, what we could do? We could watch it on uh, Apple SharePlay. What is it? Like Xbox with friends. Like watching Xbox, Netflix with friends. Oh, oh okay. Does that makes sense. Uh. Oh. I don't know. Get it, man. Here I am trying to create more in, into brotherness, and Kenny's like, "No, I'm good." I mean, I could just wait till the movie comes out. I'm, I already bought it. Also, you you asking me to watch it on the phone versus watching it on my TV? Like, I don't know what you talking about. I'm watching it on my TV. So, I mean, you could we, do... all, we don't all got Apple TVs. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't. I, I don't have one of those broke bitches out here. You said trying have to be selfish. Those, but... <laughs> Just sell one of them fun- Funkos up top, Kenny. I'm sure you get like at least five of them. <laughs> it's not that I not that I could get whatever I want, but I just choose not to get an Apple TV. There's nothing that really appeals to me to it. At the first, when I when I first started at the post office, my friend had told me, yeah, you know, you could airplay from your phone to your Apple TV. So back when I used to use like a website to bootleg movies, I, think ah, I used yeah, to yeah, use yeah. Um, ah, I one, two, three ones. movies. Yeah, one, two, three movies. Yeah, there you go. It was I had that on my phone, and then I could play it on my phone, and then stream it to my Apple TV, and then it would play on my TV. I was like, "Oh, this shit is awesome!" Showbox. But then after, oh, after, Showbox, the app. Maybe yeah, I think it might have been Showbox. But one, two, three movies is definitely one that I use also. But then after a while, I was just like, "Ah, I ah, forget it," because then you can't do anything on your phone. You can't look up shit as it's happening. So I was just like, the whole thing with Apple TV just didn't make sense to me because all the apps that are there I have on the you could, the you Xbox could use your the phone and do it too nah I'm alright I'll be alright well you don't need it anyway though. Yeah. so Kenny how was your Halloween <laughs> normal I guess I didn't sell I don't celebrate Halloween oh okay okay <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's like we died. <laughs> it, so, happens. Uh, I got, it happens. Uh, it happens. It happens. Do you guys at least know of of the the end credit scene in Shang Chi? Mm, no. Okay. You could tell so me. I mean, I wouldn't mind. You could tell I me. Mean, I mean, there's two. I remember two looking it up, here. but I, yeah, I remember looking it up. But honestly, I it wasn't really memorable to my my recollection. Um, um, yeah. So, so do you care if I, if I, if No, I no, yeah, you, no, you can talk about it. So uh, the movie ends with or the end credit scene is um Bruce Banner in Bruce Banner form, not in Hulk Bruce Banner mode, just in Bruce Banner mode. Um they're talking about the ten rings and with Wait, the not in Hulk? Ring, in Bruce in Science is Bruce? In si- in just regular Sorry, Bruce just Hulk. asking. Okay. He got he got a sling on. Ooh. But they're gonna. They're looking at the the ten rings, and I guess they're trying to figure out where it's from. So, um, they were looking at it, and they were saying that basically that's something beyond their their time. Like this is from a whole different world. And then they were saying that there was that it was giving off a si- a signal as if it was giving information to someone. And then the screen kind of cuts to black from there, but there's more. You know, there's more suspense to it. So. Mm. Okay, you sound the, yeah. Remember now with the with since they're rewriting what the the ten rings actually are in the MCU, the what they were going about is that maybe this can be something from related to Kang. So that's the implications. Hmm. Well, because w- Kang is going to be in the next uh, Ant Man movie, right? And, uh, yes. Quantumatum, Quantumatum, or whatever. Quantumania. Quantumania, there you go. So, you know, Marvel does, there's a reason for everything. And I was going to say this before, but Kenny uh, 
cut me off a little bit, that what if the Eternals were meant, like, like you ask yourself, why are they in the show? Why are you showing me this if, like you said, this is a big empty movie, right? What are they there for? Maybe not Kang, but somebody after that. Maybe Galactus. Maybe the Celestials might come into this and maybe they're fighting against them. Because I would think that depending, we'll see the, their powers in the movie because we only got comic books. But when we watch it, they might be entirely different. They could defeat Kang really easy. Or maybe they're fighting a different version of Kang that's really powerful. And then the Avengers are fighting another version of Kang. Like, why would you incorporate it knowing what the big bad of this series is coming? You're not going to incorporate them and then wait till phase five to then use them. It just depends on the events of the movie. No, I know, but I'm just saying, like, they're very powerful. Like, this is a Superman. Like, how could you use them? Like, I'm asking, how would you use them? We know Kang is the next villain. We know it's an Avengers level event. You know, would he be too strong? Would they be too strong to fight him? I have no idea. They may end up being like Captain Marvel. They just gave us a movie, and then the next movie she came. Yeah, but at least when they incorporated her and she fought Thanos, it it made sense. Like she was powerful than Thanos, but he needed a freaking Infinity Stone to to knock her out. Not really defeat her, but just you know get her out the way. Yeah, but they, like in terms of it, they gave us Infinity War, which introduced her at the very end of the movie, or with you know Nick Fury calling her, and then. Um, then we got her movie, which was the past, just to tell us who she is slash was. And then, you know, I kind of feel like she took a backseat in the end game, but there she was. Mm. Well, that that can also be a tribute to the fact that they filmed those movies before they filmed hers. Yeah, but because I don't know, I, I, I kind of feel like she she could have had a bigger role. Or made her entrance way better. Like, just imagine mm. if she didn't actually enter into that fight. In Endgame? In Endgame. So, wait. This is her showing up in the beginning of the movie just to help them cut Thanos' head off and then has no role throughout the middle of the movie and reappears at the end. For all that, they, they could have just left, let her appear at the end of the movie, call it a day. Probably would have been more hype, like, oh shit, it's Captain Marvel, versus, you know, her being in the beginning just to not really do anything anyway. Yeah, by the sounds of it, just maybe Marvel fucked that whole thing up. Well, Marvel, the studio, not Captain Marvel. Maybe that's what probably the second movie is gonna fix. Maybe like more about her or something. Like, because I totally get like, like, um, Black Panther, because, you know, Black Panther, the, uh, Affinity War was already made so they didn't know the popularity that he was going to end up receiving because of it mm. so because who knows maybe if they knew he could have ended up being one of the surviving avengers now it worked awesome. out the way it did because he the original seven or five were the ones yeah, who survived had a koi, you know just chilling in the background too yeah but she's a regular person you know <laughs> you know it wasn't like she was a main plot to the story if anything it was just like oh we need a representative from wakanda mm-hmm. her and, Sh- and shuri but <clears throat> I-, I think you're wrong for that one on, the, on captain marvel being in the beginning of um end game because they're gonna fight Thanos. you know they didn't know if he still had the stones so you need all the firepower and she knew about the event because nick, nick called her from why would she world, not show up from an in-world perspective I get it, but from a storyteller watching a movie perspective, I feel like it's a waste of a character. But how is it? We know about her, right? Why know, would she not show up? So how fast know. she can fly through galaxy, well, the universe, whatever galaxy. Yeah, and I, you could have left it at you know. For me, you could have left it at hey, she appeared at the end of um Infinity War. Okay, we know she's out there now. We got her movie. Ah, right, we know who Captain Marvel is. But right after that movie, I would have thought, hey, maybe she has a bigger role in all of this now. Not just, again, not to ap- just appear in the first opening of the movie. Not really do do much besides save She Tony. held Thanos down. 
We talking about the beginning when they chopped his head off. Yeah. Anybody could have done that at that point. Thor could have done that. No, no, no. Hulk, I understand. Hulk no, 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 no. No, 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 no. no. He did, he wasn't even there at that point. But what I'm saying, and not to drag it on, is right. Thanos in the Infer- in Infinity War, he fucked up Thor. Young Thor, not even fat. Thor. Well, I think he was young in this. He wasn't skinny. I meant to say right. And he, he's, still I was gonna, he's still he was still buff Thor. But besides that, it was Thor and Captain. Everybody else was like, eh, mid tier strength. If he fucked them up in the beginning of the first uh, in Infinity War, and then they came back, knowing he's on his plan, he's not really doing much. He may have the stones. In a story wise perspective, you want to show the gravity that of the threat of Thanos being there. So since Captain Marvel <laughs> received that beeper from Nick Fury, show her like what. Then we can sit. Then, let's say they didn't do that. Then we might sit here and say. She knew about it. Where was she? Why couldn't she help him in the beginning? You think they could have held him down? Just this capped and, and Thanos? I mean, and Thor? At that moment? Because he didn't even fight back. He did fight back a little bit. They just surprised him. He, but he fought back they, when they, he surprised him. He was like, fight back, nigga. Fight back. Yeah, after he was. <laughs> yeah, but after they. After she's holding his neck down, she's like, nah, whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, he, he wasn't really fighting back. Like, at that point, he, he just. He. he he succeeded in what he wanted to do. He retired to Farmer Thanos. And, you know, he may have defended himself in a little bit, but he wasn't going to beat all of them, even without Captain Marvel. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't see like, any from other a, way. In, in universe, in story, hey, I'm focusing on what's happening in this universe. I get it of her showing up. But in the grand scheme of me watching the movie and how they write this movie, I just felt like her whole thing could have been handled better. Like just her, just her showing up and doing more. Like, I, I just feel, I don't know. I feel like I'm not gonna say drop the ball because I don't. I definitely don't feel that way. I just feel like a lot more could have been done with her. Like maybe just maybe included her in Endgame more. Maybe she could have been doing more. Maybe she could have been help helping with this, with this quest. Like, cause again. You give me a whole movie on her to kind of make her feel like a big deal, but then when we get to the movie, all the all she all she's doing is taking direction from Black Widow. <laughs> True. <clears throat> now he thought about it. <laughs> no, I did think about it though. Mm-hmm. Like you're supposed to be this, you know. Excuse me, I'm not trying to kill anybody, but she. A strong feminist, and then you're getting, you know, especially with powers, and then Black Widow comes like, do this. She's like, okay. Oh, I thought it would have been the other way around, because they're egotistical. You know, the whole power concept of it, like you're telling me what to do, because you sh- you saw she held herself in the movie. Exactly. Yeah. But you have a lot of characters in the movie, so the Russo's brother did the best that they could. And I did. I don't know if you 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 heard this before, Kenny, in the last episode, but they were supposed to all die. Oh, I, yeah. I did get to that part. Yeah. They were, so the Russo brothers were going to kill off everybody. Yeah, they're going to kill all the original uh, Avengers: Thor, Hulk. I guess Hawkeye, if you want to include them. Yeah, it would have been <laughs> so much more emotionally impactful. But then again, all at once, I feel like there would have been too much emotion to the point where it's just like, all right, now you're just like fucking with me. Like, I feel like the fact that they only killed Black Widow and Tony. And like, Gamora. Come on, Gamora. I don't count Gamora because in the different world, Gamora alive. is still alive. But the one that we're familiar with died. I don't count. No, I, I, don't, I don't count that. I feel like that was one of the... You cheapen Gamora's death that way, in a sense. Because Gamora... Got, for me, Gamora's death in Infinity War, that was, like, you know, kind of heartbreaking. Especially, like, you know... Seeing Thanos being emotional about it, not expecting her to, you know, be killed over it. And, you know, you expect when someone dies, they're really dead. Like on some James Gunn shit. Somebody was questioning him on Twitter today about, like, Yandu. And they were like, oh, we all know if you don't see a body, they're still alive. And James Gunn is like, yo, I swear to you on my kids, this nigga is dead. Yandu is dead and shit. But apparently people think he's still alive for some reason. Yeah, he said he wouldn't bring her back because it would be literally the sacrifice that he made. Yeah. Unless, it's, like a, you... unless it's a variant. 
And then, yeah, then this whole thing creates, like, a new whatever. Like I said, at this point, I just want to watch these movies and just be entertained. But when it comes to just, like, oh, you know, we're going to bring this character back or some shit like that, it's just... At this point, I'm just at a point where it's just like, Marvel, do whatever the fuck you want to do, man. I mean, I'll watch it or I won't watch it, but I'm not as invested as I used to be like that. Yeah, like, uh, at this point in time, I fully expect Tony, Tony Stark to come back whenever they mm. wrap up, be, ra- whatever the wrap up is going to be to, to Kang. I like, wouldn't even be surprised if they bring Tony back for this new Spider Man, not that supposedly we're going to have three of them in there. Imagine they, they show they show imagine they show a scene where supposedly, you know, Spider Man's in a new world and he's like, oh, Tony? And then Tony looks at him like, Hey, what's up, kid? Or whatever the fuck. And, and then that's it. Yeah, but then it's again, like, we're gonna oh. get the same argument and the same shit I've been telling you. Can Tom Holland hold the movie without somebody else or without Tony? Well, we'll find that out in Uncharted. Okay, Tom Holland's <laughs> Spider Man, not Tom Holland as an actor. His Spider Man. Can he hold himself in a movie without it? I don't, I don't know. know. It's hard it's hard to say because you know, they built the universe around it. So they wanna, you know, Marvel wants to do the little Easter eggs. They wanna be like, Oh, oh look at who look who look who this is. This is uh this is from the movie two movies ago. There's this guy. Remember him? And shit like that. I mean, look, this, they would remember that speculation about people like, oh, we're definitely going to see Daredevil in this movie. How they thought the lawyer that slams down, like, the books right next to Spider-Man is Daredevil. I still think that's him, though. But it's it's, it's, it's not, because the body don't match. That dude is, like, chunky. Daredevil ain't chunky. No, they actually, they, they showed the guy's face. No! Here's, they showed the, the same yeah, scene gee. from another angle, and his face that's, is there. Yeah, that's not, that's not Charlie now, Fox. Now, if you want to go with it, then, then I'll tell you, hey, I think he's going to be at the very end of the movie when they finally throw Spider-Man in jail for being Spider-Man because of J. Jonah Jameson. Then Matt is going to show up and be like, oh, hey, you need a lawyer? Boom, oh end of movie. Oh, my God. If it's not that... I would much rather see credit. that. I'd Thank rather God. see that than see Tony. I'd much rather see Matt Murdock in it than see Tony. Because the the rumor the rumor is that Matt Murdock is supposed to be in this movie if he does if he uh, also there's another Disney Plus series coming up with uh, with somebody who's related to Kingpin, and they believe at least Kingpin uh, Wilson Fisk will end up being in the Hawkeye series. Oh Jesus! If, if not actually him, his name will be mentioned. <laughs> So much foam, so much fucking potential, and like I said, it's just they can bring everybody I, I just, back except Iron Fist. Fuck, fuck Iron Fist. <laughs> Who? Iron Fist got the Who? shit into the stick, man. <laughs> Another Game of Thrones character. I felt so bad for him, man. Freaking Danny. And everyone shitted on this show, and they're like, "Yo, this guy is whack." It wasn't so bad. I saw the first episode. It wasn't so bad. Okay, yeah, yeah enough that you didn't episode. see the series. <laughs> I got <laughs> bored. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go, nigga. There's some TV shows I watch. I just can't, oh, I, you gotta lure me in, man. Like, like when it comes for me, and you guys can answer this question if you want to. When it comes to any TV show, not movies, because movies I give a lot of uh, like benefit. But it comes to TV shows. If you're not drawn in by the first, the first episode with mystery or world building in a way and just something that can like the characters are not doing the same typical trope. I'm with it. But if you can't do that, then it's like, there's a lot of shows. People say, yo, watch it like money heist. I don't, it doesn't sound interesting to me to watch that show. You know, um, pow, power, that shit looks fucking boring. Power looks boring. I'm hearing this shit called dope sick. That sounds boring. Like reading gotta, the fucking shit of it. Said it. Because my wife sometimes listens to this. I got to <laughs> defend power. I'm sorry. I can't okay, wait, wait. Let me finish. Power. Let me finish the shows. Let me rant on my show. Hold up. <laughs> Empire <laughs> looks... Some scenes look okay. But as a whole... Like, if I'm going to sit there and devote, you know, an hour a day or whatever for this show, it better be good. You know? So you try, you're saying that they need to achieve that in one episode? No, no, no. no. You, you don't need to... You need to at least start, like, like... Like start jerking me off for not finishing me off right in the first episode. Like just 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 start with the tip. That's for me in the first episode. I need something 
you know. But then again, I am a sucker for a lot of fan uh, fantasy historical elements like The Witcher, uh, game you know, Game of Thrones, Vikings. I feel like that's asking for a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I, I like the show Billions. There's, Billions there's is a, a good show. There's uh, a lot um, of people that have Ozark. Cool. There's a lot of people that put a rule in where it's just like it's a three episode rule. If you're not into the story by the first three episodes, then you could really say, all right, yeah, it didn't capture me. You can't just give it one episode. That's, that's how I felt about you. I gave did you did you no, but you, within you got episodes? me in the first episode. The first episode I was done. My wife was like, yo, watch this. I was like, holy shit, let's finish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like because I I don't remember what episode it ends, but I just know he, I got to the point after he killed the the dude, the first very first dude that you know he ends up locking down. Was it with uh, poisoned, an allergy? Poisoned, yeah, he poisoned him with his oh, allergy. Oh yeah, that's like that was, I got I got through that whole part, and I was just like, yeah, I'm not really feeling the show, but I'm like it's it's okay. It's just something I gotta. Well, I'm not feeling it at this moment. I mean, look, look in the terms of Game of Thrones, Giovanni. Game of Thrones, you know how many times Wait, I've you started, trying to convince I've me? started, <laughs> but, but how many times have we started and then stopped Game of Thrones because you couldn't get into the first season? Yo. You crazy. Oh, no, no, not you. Sorry, John, John. Oh, I had to watch. I went I 100% you, off John's I, words. I could, no, because I, yeah, I'm sorry. That, that was John. Because I was the same way. I've watched the first episode so many times. Uh, I tried to get into it around the beginning when it for when the show first started, and I just couldn't do it. It took me years later to power through it, and I was like, "Okay, I finally get it." But I had to. I felt like I felt like that after the first season, not after the first episode, not after the first three episodes. I felt like that, or after the entire season, because then it really gave me time to reflect on it. Yeah. So that first episode rule, the three episode rule, for me, it did not apply to Game of Thrones. I feel like I had to force myself for that shit in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. for 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 me, Game of Thrones was uh, my coworker. Shout out to Joey. Um, I attempted to watch it maybe two or three times with my wife, and every time we just like kind of fucking passed out or fell asleep on it. Yeah. and it was for me. It was just because. In the first episode, they're throwing so many characters in front of you, but they're not really telling you who they are. It's like I, the only person I can gauge is important at the time was uh, uh, Rob Bar- Baratheon, the, who was the king. But after yeah. that, it's just like I'm not really understanding the rest of these characters right now. So when I was watching it with him, he was like, yeah, okay, boom, pause. This is who this is, and this is why he's important. This is who this is. And I'm like, okay, now I get it. And from that point on, the show took off. Once I got that, I was okay, I'm in. I'm in there. Yeah, because that first episode, it throws you Cersei's family. It throws you Ned's family. It throws you the, the, the oh, my God. I forgot. Not Night Walkers. What are they called? White, White Walkers. Walkers. White, White Walkers. They throw, they throw you White Walkers. They're throwing you all this shit. It's like, it's like I said, it's a, it's a sensory overload. You can't, like you can't do that. Information dump. You can't, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that on the first episode. But that's it's how not the books like... are. The books are like that, bro. But at least in the book, I'm pretty sure it will say like you know, Ned Stark is walking into frame, some shit, some shit like that. Versus <laughs> a nigga's just walking into frame, oh. expecting to know that he's important. <laughs> but then again, do y'all listen to it with what with, with subtitles? Do y'all watch yeah, these shows? I, yeah, that's the only way I watched it. Oh, I didn't know that, bro. That's how I watch it. So like, it helps me out with certain words and shit. But I sometimes they might say Ned Stark grunted. Oh, that's Ned Stark, right? <laughs> Possibly, I guess. Oh, man. oh, wait, wait. But, but for you guys, you, if you want to answer the question, what would drag you in? What would give you into the show? You passed your three episode mark. You know, how about this one? What turns you away after your three episode mark? If that's your metric, your standard. What pushes me away from a show after yeah, three yeah. episode mark? Because I know John well, wanted to mention power, so I want to give him that. Oh no! It was it's just more so of like, because I felt the same way about power. I felt power and empire were like in the same vein, but oh, my wife had really wanted me to watch power, and so I gave it. I I was going with three episode rule, but I ended up watching it for two seasons, so I got twenty episodes in. So nobody can ever take it away from me. I watched twenty episodes. <laughs> my issue with the show became is that I guess. I feel like a false perception of the show 
is created to me, was created for me. It's like, it's like, so you got Ghost, who is the main character of the show. You know anything about Power Kenny? I know very, very little. All right, so we got Ghost, who's the main character. <laughs> nah, nah, because nah, it's, it's just that it's me explaining that if he knows at least what I'm talking about. That's I do, I do, I do know the character of Ghost. I've, I've seen it. I've de- I think I know some of the characters enough that I've seen it talked about online, like with memes and shit like that. So I yeah. think, yeah, I know Ghost. So Ghost, I was be- led on to believe that this, this nigga's a nigga not to be trifled with. Ruthless, they could name ghosts. Like, yeah, this, he yeah he gives that vibe. When you see you it. don't cross this nigga. You don't do shit to this nigga. When the name now, like ghost, that's pretty fire. Exactly. Yeah. I I literally saw that nigga from the first episode. And never saw that nigga again. <laughs> Wait, he's only in the first episode. No, like he's there throughout the show, but oh, the ruthless, okay. like, cause ghost is is the persona. Oh, okay, right. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. persona he puts up. But I was like, yo, like I've been watching this show for two seasons now. I just finished season two, going into season three, and I'm like, where the fuck? What the? Where the fuck is Ghost? Like, I see, I see this nigga that that y'all tell me is Ghost, but I'm like, this nigga Tommy though. Like on the side, his his the second in command. This nigga Tommy, yo, you don't fuck with Tommy. Like yo, shit, I'm like Tommy, shit, I've, like, Tommy. I've heard chum, of the character Tommy. Chum, yeah. Anybody, everybody, like fuck that. I'm like yo, I'm more invested in Tommy and Ghost. And then if I go on Facebook. And I, I I I complained. I was like, oh, like yo, I've been watching this show for this long. I'm not even just in the first season because I don't even hear. Oh, you didn't get that far. Like, nah, this is six seasons long. I'm starting season three. I don't want to hear nothing about you ain't watch it. No, then it. Oh, you got to get to the end. So I got to wait all the way to the end of the show to get to this ruthless nigga called Ghost Shadow. I'm like, as far as I'm concerned, oh, this nigga just worried about the next piece of pussy he gonna get. Like. He's stuck in a love affair with his wife and, and his <laughs> ex-girlfriend. So can't make decisions for nothing. Tommy is fucking running everything at this point in time. And I'm just like, I don't get it. I, I'm not seeing it. And that shit, it, it started turning me off. It made me not watch Power no more. Because I'm like, I just, yeah, y'all yeah, keep telling me, like, yo, when you see Ghost do this, I'm like, I ain't see Ghost do nothing but try <laughs> to figure out how he going to try to hide that he's been fucking another girl. Like, that's the only thing Ghost has been doing for two seasons. In a love a love affair with another woman trying to figure out how he gonna hide it. Then the nigga finally get caught and now he's still talking about he in love with him. So I'm like, like this nigga Tommy, though, know, this nigga Tommy about to go on a, go on a rampage because the girl he was with is on a snitch and he about to go choke. I'm like, yo, that is Tommy is my god. Fuck fuck ghosts. Like <laughs> Oh shit. I mean, look, I mean I, this is I'm still definitely not gonna watch power. But one show yeah, that I know I gave I gave like a season and a half and I forgot why I stopped, but I just I didn't care no more was uh unfortunately was a uh, arrow. I felt the same way. Yeah. Oh, oh, I watched, okay. Wait, which I watched how many I seasons watched, you got into? I watched the first season. I remember liking it because Ooh. he was doing shit that Batman wouldn't do. Like he was he was killing motherfuckers. Yep. So I, I enjoyed it at the time. But then after the first season, I, and then the second season started, I think I got like halfway through, and they come to find out one of the guys on the show is was like another version of Arrow, or I think it started going more by his backstory when he was on the island or some shit. And I just, I just felt, not fell out of love with it, but I was just like, ah, I got other shit to watch. I'll just leave it in the DVR. And I just never got back to it. And I just deleted it from all memory. I've wanted to go back to it to finish it, but the fact that it's like nine seasons or eight seasons long, eight. and there's so many crossover episodes that have with this Legends of Tomorrow crap, Flash, Supergirl, I'm just like, absolutely the fuck not. I can't do it. I love Oliver Quinn. And the guy that played him, I think he did a fantastic job. <laughs> Oliver Queen. Oliver so, Queen. Yes, Oliver Queen. Uh, Oliver Queen, yeah. Queen. Uh, Queen, yeah. Uh, you know, Stephen when Amell. When great great actor. Niggas, when he hit the niggas with the line, you failed this city. I was like, oh, shit. I did. Yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> like I said, I was like, this is cool. Because, like, the action, I was like, oh, this, like, this, is, this is great. But, man, like I said, when that second season started, I think probably less than halfway I got. Less than halfway through the season I got. I was just like, uh. Yeah. Uh, I'll just leave it there. It's just for me watching the Flash. It's just like I I didn't feel like committing anymore. I got three, maybe four seasons in, and I just I just didn't feel like committing to it anymore. That's that's what happened to me. 
Yeah, That's I get that feeling when yeah when shows. Sorry, Giovanni. When shows go uh over a certain limit, if it's like a six season, I love I love like a six or a five season show. Any less than that is great. Any more than that, I feel like you're kind of pushing it. But depending on my interest level, I'll stick through it. But don't you dare go past fucking nine or ten seasons. But here's the kicker to that, right? A season can have nine, 10, 11, 12, right? But how long are each episode within that season? Because Game of Thrones was like 10, right? And this is something me and John have spoke about multiple times. If Arrow, Flash, um, I can't, no, I can't. But Arrows and Flash, I'm not going to say Legends or the other ones out there. Or Supergirl. But if they would have stayed within 10 to 13 episodes, I think each season would have been phenomenal because you, you don't have to worry about side plots side stories or just filler episodes and just dragging it out just like up, cut the fat out exactly because when it comes to arrow season one season two was great three was okay four was okay f- i i don't remember what season but the one when oliver went to jail and they were and then the one after that with prometheus those were pretty good but if they would have honed it down to 10 or 12 it would have been great because mm-hmm. Isn't like Walking Dead the same thing? Like what, six episodes in one season, then six in the next? Besides what they did later on, which was a lot of fillers. But in the beginning, we enjoyed it, right? It was short, it was sweet. I had to sit there and wait for twenty three episodes. The story was streamlined. I'm done. The AMC got <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and what AMC got? What? I so said they got overzealous. But in. And now that you mentioned, and and me just because I mean I didn't get till later because good change, but from the first three seasons, I don't really feel like 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 the fat of Arrow was really like fat. Like I don't really feel like it was bad as, as no, it Flash wasn't. Changed. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It, it, but there was a lot of flashback episodes, which was great for character development of Oliver Queen. But it's like, how many times that like this big bad is directly related to his flashback? It's oh like it was great. I just got tired of the same. Like I love the show, but I just got tired of the same theme. And also, I hate. <clears throat> it's just something that I hate with the Flash, or at least when it comes to CW. You have a core three man team. Stop adding five, six, seven, eight, nine people on your team. 22. Now you are worried about huh? Twenty two. Now you worry about how can I incorporate all these characters? Give them all shine. How can I make it that the bad guy is strong enough that he can defeat all these twenty-two characters? Let's not talk about the Flash because that's a no another conversation. Because you know, you know, at this point, the, <laughs> the show is called the Flash, but it's about everybody but the Flash. No, no, it's called it's about Iris. It's about <laughs> Iris. Like, oh, I'm his lightning bolt. No, pitch. Like, you just help him to clean. It. It. it the Flash. This is what. If the Flash, I can't, I can't, because when it comes to the comic book Flash and the TV show, I really get upset. Oh, I love this. Like, sh- you sound like you're about to say you just help him clean. <laughs> Wait, what? I help him what? Yeah. It really sounded like you was about to say you just help him clean. <laughs> Wait, I'm so I help him clean what? I'm confused. Wait, the part, the part where you were know. like, where Iris is like, oh, you know, I'm his lightning bolt. You're like, no, bitch, you just help him clean or some shit like that. <laughs> It sounds like you were trying to put her in a place or something. No, like that. no, no. Oh, no, no, no. I, Kenny, I'm a feminist now. You can't say, you know, that's what, it, that's, what I'm saying, that's, that's what we're laughing at because that's what it sounded like. I'm a, I'm a feminist, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> this guy could defeat everybody in a millisecond, a nanosecond. It's even faster. And it's like, they get away. Oh, I ran away. The fastest man in the world runs like what 10, 12 miles an hour. The flash is running near light speed times four, and you can't circle around the block ten times and find him. That that's the shit that, that that I always hate. You know? Which is probably why the Superman show is doing a great job because they're actually making sense when it comes to his villains and and all the stuff around it. That's actually a good show if you ever want to get back into CW, Superman and Lois. Yeah, I saw it on HBO Max. I did the first six episodes when they had it exclusively on HBO Max, but then they took it off to finish the series on CW. But now it's back on the rest of the episodes, so I want to finish it. I love those first six episodes. I was really hooked on it. I hope it doesn't do an Arrow and then I'm bored by the second season. I want to continue it, and I hope they don't do what Arrow and Flash does 
and start going to 10 seasons, just give me, give me a nice, give me a nice piece. Don't, I don't need a big meal. Just a nice, a nice plate. That's all I want on these shows. I don't know. I'm hungry. <laughs> Were you like hungry it. for Walking Dead? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I can't speak out about Walking Dead. I, I think it was after. Was it Sophie? No, it wasn't after. No, Terminator. When, when the war happened. Yes, thank you. I got out. Uh, I the war with what, the, the prison, right? No, not the no, prison. No, no, the, the Negan, Negan part. Negan. The Negan. When oh, Negan, war, after right? Negan killed every, well, the two main, you know, Abraham and, and Glenn. After that, it was just like, to me, it felt like every episode was one person's character development. Mm-hmm. And it was fucking boring. And it was very long. It's like, what are yeah, you showing was- me? And then the season finale is like, like I believe, with my last thought, <clears throat> I believe one season was like one day just told 10 different times. Yes, that was the season <laughs> I got out. I, yo, because it was, it was, it was everybody, they were, they were all attacking, um, whatever the fuck it's called, um, Negan shit. Alexandria. Oh, okay. No, they was they was His all attacking Negan. Yeah, stuff, they yeah. they were all going after him. All of them was doing it, but they they kept telling me the same the same day day event from everybody's different perspective. So you had one episode centered around Daryl surviving by himself to meet up with some group. Then you had another episode with um the kingdom with Ezekiel helping fight it, fighting, keeping the front alive. And then you have the other side was going, like there was a, a, you heard this random explosion in the episode that happened before. So now we got to find out where that explosion came from, right? So let's go over there and tell you what happened. So, okay. in that same episode, there was a sniper bullet. I don't know why, but there was just a random sniper bullet. Now we need to show you that there was a random fight going on. That sniper bullet ended up there by accident. So let's pan over there. It was just like, yo, this is ridiculous. Like, I, I just got Damn. to the point like, yo, fuck. I was like, yeah, I'm done. I, I, I and that I was that was the point when I started getting into Game of Thrones. And I, I there was a time in my life where I would I would have died on the hill to tell you like Walking Dead was better than Game of Thrones. But after that, I didn't, I didn't I even know like, they did that. Yes, it was terrible, man. It was terrible. I was like, like, like it was up in like prior to that season, and probably the end of the season before when Negan was introduced. I was enjoying the shit out of Jeffrey Dean Morgan playing Negan. Like, I was like, yo, this is perfect. Like, I'm enjoying it. But then I got to the point where I just felt like this guy's becoming a joke to me and I don't like it. Like, he's just, you know, he comes, gives me his one-liner. I feel good about it. I laugh like a little girl. And then it's just like, he's off to the next episode. And I'm just like... That's how I felt. That's how I felt in his first episode. He was like, oh, I hope you have your... Pants shitting on or whatever. I hope you when got I went with pants on, shit pants on. When I heard that, I was like, "Oh shit!" He said the thing. He said the thing. Said it's about Everything he said <laughs> was direct from the comic books. 100%. Yeah, that, that's what I liked about that episode. But it's like you said, after a while, it's just like he's playing like a characterization of me. I hated it. I hated because after like ten episodes, he's always like leaning back, like. Ugh. Yeah, like he's always like leaning back, and then every time he talks, he's just like, with the like bat, this man. with the bat. Yeah, just like lean back, and I'm like, how far are you gonna go? I don't have a bat, but he'd be like, hey. yes, it's just like Fuck it's, me. It's, it's like the fuck. It's like the oh yeah, you know, I'm too cool to stand straight, so I'm just like this the entire time talking to somebody. And I'm like, oh my god, it got so annoying. I couldn't, I couldn't stop looking at it every time he was on screen. I was like, fuck this show, man. And then I don't even get me started on spinoffs. I never it was Walking. good. Um, Fear, the Walking, Fear the Walking Dead was Walking good Dead in the beginning. Good. In the beginning. But then it became the same shit later on. It, it was it became the same thing. It was Fear the Walking Dead, and now they have like a new spinoff for like teenage kids, some shit, right? Uh yeah, right. yes. Oh, well, Walking Dead ends is gonna be another Another show for just Carol and Carol and Daryl. Jesus oh Christ, man! God. Can they just stop? Listen, they're the, not the even comic, main the characters books, in the comic. The comic, book, the comic books stopped already. You have to get to a certain point in these shows. Just like, okay, we can't beat this dead horse anymore. I'm glad Norman Reedus has work. 
because I like them. <laughs> They're zombies, oh, though, so the horse will keep coming back. Jesus. It's just like, oh, fuck. And then supposedly No Maridas is coming back for uh, the Boondocks Part 3. I read that, and I was like, give me that. I'm tired of Walking Dead. Give me Boondocks Part that's 3. I'll take confirmed. that over that. I thought that came out already, right? Didn't it? No, Didn't that's I? Part 2, nigga. That came out recently. Yeah, right. That within the five years. All, within five all years, right? State came out probably like five or six years ago. Okay, okay. Just, you know, just want to make I, sure. The weird, yeah. the weird thing for Norman Reedus, I feel like, like after Walking Dead, I can't see him function unless he's in some weird shit. Like, I know, right? When he was in Blade, it just didn't work. I, like, I, I remember him in Blade, and it just like wiped that from my memory. He's in Walking <laughs> Dead now, and you know, like I, I'm seeing Daryl, and I'm like, that's just you. Like, I don't know how, but that's that's you. Does Daryl and Carol show? I, I, I'll, I'll accept it. I don't like it, but I'll accept it because Daryl is just you somehow. Then you know I see him in fucking Death Stranding, and I'm like, I don't know how, but this works. It does. I, I like, I like seeing you like this. I, 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 have, I, don't, I can't bring up anything else that he's been in. Besides he would, he would have been in PT or Silent Hills, one of those games. He was PT, supposed yeah, to be in PT, PT, Silent, PT. Yes, or yeah, one of the two. Not, not the answer is right. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of anything else he's been in that really and stands out. But you're right. When you see him in, when you see him now, compared, like you said, John, I wasn't played too. You're like, damn, that, that was you, bro? Like, that's weird. Mm-hmm. And seeing him, it, okay, what it was, Boondocks. If you see him in the first Boondocks, completely different. Second Boondocks, well, you know, like, compared to how you see him now, it's just like, I don't know if I can see you as like this campy actor in a movie that's like satire. It's it's weird. Almost like you, uh, not that you don't want to take him seriously, but I feel like you just can't at this point. Or him in a rom com. <laughs> rom com too. Oh, granted, he was in a uh, vacation in that in that movie. He was like a truck driver that like uh, but still. molested molested kids and shit. No, no, I could have swore he was in. A, wait, wait, was he just trying to give them their phone or some shit? Yeah, but remember he they were like, "Oh, what's the teddy bear in front of in front of your truck for?" Like, "Oh, that's for the kids, so they don't get scared when I'm when they're riding with me," because he was a child molester and a child killer in the movie. Uh, yeah, but it was okay. like a very it's like a very one of those side things where it wasn't the purpose of the movie, but it was more done for comedic effects. But ah, uh, okay, yeah. But that was like, that's the only thing I can remember thinking of. I can't really see him as anything else. Don't forget Andrew Lincoln, Andrew Lincoln doing a movie within the Walking Dead universe. It's like three of them, right? Yes. If that's still going to happen. I was going to say, what happened to that? COVID. Mm. Legit COVID. That's really what stopped it all. I don't know. It's been a long time. Okay, COVID and the show is dying too. They're like, should we really do this? I mean, look, the, I'm, I'm sure that show makes a lot of money come Comic-Con time. And maybe that's why AMC wants to beat this dead horse because they want they want that Comic-Con money. They want the they want the ad revenue money from everyone that watches it on TV because I feel like they haven't had a hit like this since uh, what, the last show. Breaking Mad Bad? Men. Oh, Breaking Bad. Okay, it was Mad Men, Breaking Bad, and then it was The Walking Dead. Better Call Saul at, Into the Badlands. Oh, better call into the Badlands. I don't know about into the Badlands, bro. Not a hit, but you know it held moderate. It was it it was it was like two or three seasons. It was short and sweet. That's also one show that I've wanted to get back into. I think I saw like probably the first episode. I think I think it's on Netflix. I'm not mistaken. But look, a show like a show like Breaking yeah, a show like Breaking Bad. You had six seasons, and then that's it. You're done. Ended it. Amazing. Has that has that same attention. Uh, what season good, are they on now? Like four? Good, probably four, but what? I, I, I better call Saul. I just feel like I feel like your diehard Breaking Bad fans are, are still there in terms of that show. Definitely. Not that it's bad or anything. I just don't feel like it has that. You know, it's. it's I don't think it will be be up there in the height of Breaking Bad or the height of like Walking Dead. I don't really put it on that same level. There are a lot of people online that praise the writing on that show. That they say it's really good. So I'm waiting for it to finish so I could binge it. But um, yeah, Mandarin, I don't know when I'll ever start that, but that's one that I've always wanted to get into, but it's about advertising. So I don't know. 
watched, you know, I watched the first two episodes of that show, and it was okay. Yeah. It was okay. I don't know hmm. why I didn't continue it. I don't have an answer for you, but it was okay. Same thing for what's the other show that was on there with the the bike gang? Sons of Anarchy. Yes. That was FX. Why? That was FX? Really? That was FX. Yeah, that wasn't AMC. Oh, it seems like it would be an AMC show. I think they came out on the same time. They were both really out around the same time. Well, mm. I watched the first season of Sons of Anarchy. I never went back. Same mm. place. I love that entire series. I even like the new the new series they have now with the Mayans. Ah, it's good, yeah, sh- yeah. It's good shit. But I'm I'm into stuff like that, so I fucks with it. I'm into fancy shit, so that's why The Witcher is like my shit right now, and Vikings. That's my shit. Anything historical is my shit. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, we should wrap this up. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> I feel like we should have wrapped it up 45 minutes ago. Okay, let's, let's just throw this up one episode <laughs> out the window then. Uh, uh, thank you for coming back, Kenny, finally. <laughs> well, this we finally. It's only been one and a half episodes. That's it. There's been two. No, we one and a half. And a half. One and a half. Down. Remember, I came at the end of that la- ah. last episode. And then this one I completely missed, so one and a half. Well, this is episode 88, untitled. Please is this going to be episode 88, or is this going to be one of the extras? Oh, I feel like... You can ask me that after the episode ended. All right, all right. <laughs> Follow us on the gram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, all that shit. But please, 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 if you listen this far, leave a rating on Apple uh, Podcast. It really does help a lot. 